when your back's against the wall and defeat seems imminent, who are you going to call? How about an obscure isolationist regional power with a penchant for piracy? That's right, the Breen join the war. Greetings, law members. This is the Dominion War. Now, last month, back in September, Avenal and Septimus III were invaded by the Romulans and Klingons, and the Klingons outflanked the Dominion forces in the south. Meanwhile, in the center, a joint Federation Romulan fleet is driving forward, pushing through the old demilitarized zone towards Cardassian space. And this month, October 2375, Fleet Group Center continues to push forward, crossing into Cardassian space. Now, in order for them not to be exposed, they need the support of... They need support from the north and south so that their flanks don't become overly exposed. And that is the main reason why Martok attacked Septimus III. The hope there is to then push forward into Cardassian space and then secure the flanks. Hopefully then, by holding Septimus and Salva, they'll be able to drive the Cardassians out of Omecla, and then they'll get support coming in from the north to drive the Dominion away from that flank, and they then can push forward. Now, in terms of actual territorial significance, obviously that's far away from Cardassia Prime. But what we do see here is a lot of just general Cardassian territory and a lot of their agricultural and manufacturing, low-level manufacturing uh, territory. So by taking these systems, you are really uh, putting, at the very least, political pressure on the Dominion as they realize that they're just going to lose like half of their population overnight, not to mention their food supplies as well. Furthermore, the Klingons continue with their flanking maneuver. The Klingons push on to Ikor, basically creating an almost fish hook around the Cardassian front in the south. The Cardassian position is now incredibly vulnerable and could pretty much collapse any day now. The Klingons could also, if they wish to, now drive on to Tauros. They've basically completely outflanked and bypassed the Cardassian fleets in that sector, they've only had to fight them very sparingly, just basically to fix them while the lead elements maneuver around them. And by doing so, they've been able to outflank the Cardassians and now threaten their territory directly. So in the initial phases of October, it really looks like the Dominion are on their last legs. And that might have been the case if it were not for one thing. The Breen joined the war. The Breen... In the first phase of this month, up to the 15th, the Breen actually carry out a very limited campaign, essentially just making their presence known. A fleet from Dozeraya moves to Chintoka and joins two Cardassian fleets and a Jem'Hadar fleet to drive out the Allies from Chintoka, and this is incredibly destructive. While at the same time, a Breen fleet manages to carry out a shock attack on Earth. How this shock attack was able to be carried out is actually quite complicated and I will explain in a full battle space episode. We will cover the Battle of Earth and explain how the Breen managed to pull that off to bring such a devastating and large-scale attack so far behind the enemy lines deep in hostile territory because it is very interesting how that happens but we won't worry about covering it here. All you need to know is that a Breen fleet struck Earth but was destroyed in the process. But they made their point very clear, and it shocks the Federation. Meanwhile, the second Breen fleet strikes Chintoka and drives out the Allies using their new dampening weapons. This is one of the most destructive attacks in the war yet. In terms of losses, you are looking at the Romulan White Fleet is wiped out, as are two Federation fleets, only Martok escapes with the remnants of the Klingon Expeditionary Force. It's also worth mentioning that all the ground troops that were deployed not just on Chintoka, but on Septimus III, have also now all been captured. And so this is a very, very significant blow 
for the Allies and really represents a change in momentum. However, this change of momentum is not yet apparent to some parts of the front. In the north, the Federation pushes to join with the center, not really realizing what's happening and how vulnerable they are to the Breen, since essentially Breen space is on their flank. In any case, the Federation and Romulans push forward to Kelrabi and Kuella and are moving essentially to join with the Federation central force. However, in so doing, they have left their flanks vulnerable. Now, with the Allies in essentially in full swing with their offensive, there's a lot of vulnerabilities and areas of weakness, which, while the Dominion can't really exploit them, the Breen can. And that is what they do through the second half of this month, as the Breen launch full-scale offensives across the entire front. One Breen fleet joins the Jem'Hadar in retaking Delta Sigma 925. This is the base that the Romulans fought at the very start of the year to capture and now have lost. They really couldn't stand against three Jem'Hadar fleets, including battleships, as well as a Breen fleet, which obviously has the energy dampening weapon, which they have no defense against. So the Romulans very quickly, after taking only a few casualties, go, go dark in deep space. Now, that leaves the Dominion free to completely scuttle the base on Delta Sigma 925, making it useless for the Romulans. If you remember, the Romulans captured Delta Sigma 925 in order to facilitate a actual invasion of the Cardassian Union. The hope of the Romulans was that they were going to be able to take territory in the Cardassian Union. That was the idea. They didn't really ask anyone else if that was going to happen, but that was their plan. And, you know, once you're there, you're there. However, without the supply base at Delta Sigma 925, they're going to find that basically impossible. They can't... They no longer have a staging area from which to bring in supplies, ground troops, so on and so forth, heavy equipment. They no longer have that. They only have their ships and whatever they bring with them on their ships. So the Romulans are going to have to now change their stance and change the way they pursue their war. Meanwhile, the second Breen fleet reinforces Salva and turns the tide in the center. The Federation and Romulan fleet is basically completely driven back from their, from their gains made in the center. And that is, again, another significant blow to the Federation. That battle, the Battle of the Frontier, was incredibly costly. It was one big starship brawl, stretching light years in size. And it took them a very long time. It was a very, very slow, very steady, very attritional battle. And for all those gains to now be suddenly lost and then to be completely driven back is a significant blow not just militarily, but in terms of morale as well. And finally, the third Breen fleet takes Iadara and now threatens to cut off Fleet Group North. Iadara is one of the main starbase locations, although that starbase was actually destroyed. There's some other stations in that system. Point is, it is a significant logistical hub for the Federation. And now the Breen have taken it and completely taken control. Now the Breen have taken a risk there because there are still res Federation reserves behind that line but at this point the Breen are essentially untouchable no one knows how to counter their energy dampener no one dares engage them and if they're just going to move to a system and hold it as far as the rest of the fleet is concerned that's fine and unfortunately it's just bad luck on the people who have already gone forward and are now in Dominion space with their lines cut off. And that really brings us to the end of the month. And as we can see, the Breen joining the war has almost immediately a new source of life. Uh, they are immediately changing the momentum of the war. And in this month, we really see that momentum in transition. It isn't quite yet with the Dominion everywhere. The Breen have not fully made their presence felt, but it is coming. And the tip and we are beginning to reach that tipping point where it now seems the war is in the favour of the Dominion. I think it's worth reflecting that 
it was about a year ago that the Romulans joined the war and they joined the war thinking that they could win it easily their that their fleet doctrine was unmatched and would the and was the silver bullet to win the war they thought that by joining the war they could bring it to an end and they would be able to take credit for all those victories and yet here we are one year later and the momentum of the war has now shifted against the allies and against the romulans and all their gains that they have made all the gains that the romulans have made have been undone in a month their only concrete gain has been lost so the romulans now have to be asking was it really worth the thousands of lives that it cost given how quickly it can all be undone and be for naught and how long before the breen start asking themselves the same questions maybe a year from now that's just the way this war is see you all next time